I mean, there's got to be some pretty sophisticated uh, neurology going on behind that, going on under the hood. I mean, to, to, for a chimpanzee to be able to put itself in the place of another chimpanzee to, to, to sort of see through its eyes almost. Yeah. Um, I mean, wh wh how does the, the neurology of the ape mind fit into this? Well, for, for primates, we don't have any, any good data on that. Uh, well, we know the size of the brain, and we know that all the brain parts that you have are present in a chimpanzee and vice versa. So, so the, the brains are, are, are complex instruments. But for humans, we have that kind of data now. There, there are people like Jean de Cetti uh, who in Chicago is doing, ex and, and Tanya Singer in Germany, who are doing experiments on humans. You put them in a brain scanner, and you present them with a situation where, for example, you stick a needle in the arm of someone they know, and uh, it lights up parts of the brain that are associated with pain as if you're sticking the needle in, the, in their own arm. So, so they're showing this reflection in the brain that they are watching the pain of somebody else and that they actually feel the pain, so, so to speak, of somebody else, like Bill Clinton did so well, you know? <laughs> so um, they, they do these experiments, but on apes we cannot unfortunately do them because um, you cannot put an ape in a brain scanner where he's fully awake because he takes the whole thing apart. <laughs> so uh, with, with, with the apes, we are more limited at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there will come a time uh, that, we, that we can probably do uh, these scanning experiments with smaller equipment, but for the moment, uh, this is not possible. Mm -hmm. But for humans, we know. And for, but, but this is the situation with humans, but I, I would prefer a neuroscientist to explain this to you because it, it's very complicated and I don't know all the parts of the brain. But what we think is happening is that in humans, um, when you watch somebody in pain, at the same time, you have an activation of an area in the brain that makes, it, makes the self other distinction. So instead of you confusing the pain that you see somebody else get with your own pain, you also at the same time are aware that this is not your pain, but it's somebody else that you're seeing. So, so there's an activation of a certain part of the brain that makes, that makes you distinguish mm -hmm. your pain from my pain. And, and that's, that's the thing that's required for perspective taking. And, and I personally believe that the mirror test that we do where we look at whether animals can recognize themselves in a mirror gets at this self-other distinction. And that's why all the animals that have complex perspective taking are also the ones who recognize themselves in a mirror. And monkeys don't, chimpanzees do, dolphins do, elephants do. And so some of the experiments we're doing with elephants are these mirror experiments. So mirrors, elephants can recognize themselves. In well, there's one elephant here at the Bronx Zoo who can do it. Hmm. Her name is Happy. <laughs> yeah, her name is Happy, and the media said she's happy and she knows it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we, uh, until now, we have one elephant who has passed the mirror, the mark test, the, the famous mark test with the mirror, um, but we're testing other elephants at the moment. Mm -hmm. 